All right, we are back. Episode Zwein, or Zwei, rather. And we are here in this little white orchard tavern, or inn. And we've just um, arrived here after helping a wandering merchant, or maybe just a merchant who's just moving his shop around. I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. This inn has glass windows, wow. You'd think that an inn in some shithole village wouldn't, wouldn't be able to afford that, but, oh, well, you know, that's, uh, that's great. But in any case, we are looking for Yennefer, and we're in this inn, so let's start on asking around. But look, first, let's just talk to Vesemir, see how he's doing, if he's holding up with his wound and everything. Yes? What is it, Wolf? Realize it's been half a year since we hunted down that fiend in Varun. Yes, well, that was more than a fiend. What was that bastard's name? Drugan? May the soil lie light upon him. Things used to be simpler. Monsters were bad, humans good. Now, everything's all confused. Used to be exactly the same. You've just forgotten. Do well not to point up my age. You're near a century old yourself. Man, if, if, if I'm... You, you know... I don't even look like half as good as Geralt does, and I'm like a quarter of his age. <laughs> God damn it, Geralt. If only I could have your bod, man. If I only, if only. See you later, Vesemir. Yo, excuse me. Did, uh, maybe you, have you gentlemen, maybe seen a, a woman pass through here? I'm looking for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. Out of my face, freak. For your breath sours my beer. Well, they're hostile, but uh, there's really no point in... Uh... Hmm. There's really no point in, like, uh, provoking them further. We do need information. Using a sign would probably... Um, using the Axie sign would probably be pretty effective, but we don't want to scare the the populace and make them fear us witchers any more than they probably already do. I mean, it would pr probably be kind of counterintuitive, so let's just see if they want to talk. Just want to talk. You deaf, Stray. No one here will talk to you. If it's company you seek, stick that mangy snout of yours in a trough with the pigs. <laughs> Show that shit-eater, Micah. Running low on patience. Once it's gone, your heads will roll. Uh, we was jesting. No call for anger. See a raven-haired woman here, dressed in black and white? We know nothing, sir. Leave us be. <sighs> Isn't that typical? You try to be nice, you try to be polite, but nobody gives a shit. But then as soon as the threat of violence pops up, suddenly everybody shits their pants. Factions. For what? Factions, teams, suits, similar to clubs and spades, except each suit has its own face cards. There are also <laughs> special cards. Wouldn't you rather play war? It's like to be near dawn before you get your game in my noggin. He's trying to teach it to Gwent. I didn't notice that the first time I was playing. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. What a waste of time. The earth shall revolve around the sun before you comprehend these rules. <laughs> Got a minute? Why not? Aldert Git, assistant professor in contemporary history at Oxenfurt Academy. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher with tenure. <laughs> I'm looking for a woman, long hair, dressed in black and white. Seen anyone like that? Of course not. Unlike the populace, I know the horsewoman of war is pure poppycock. Poppycock, horsewoman of war. What on earth? Horsewoman of war. What's that about? Folks say an omen. A beautiful phantom rides the fields at night, looks as you described her. Armies follow her, and all who cross her path meet with misfortune. I can vouch for the last bit. <laughs> know where they saw her? No facts interest me, not fairy tales. God damn it, man. God damn it. <laughs> if only you were a bit more open minded, then you would be able to help us. Isn't that typical? 
Not a place I'd ever expect to find a scholar. Take it you're fleeing the war? Quite the opposite. Chasing it. I'm headed for the front. Tired of life? I seek knowledge, which I value more than life itself. I've a thirst no dusty old tomes can quench. I wish to see the Nilfgaardian invasion with my own eyes, understand it, and record it all in my chronicle, my magnum opus. <sighs> People who are uh, book smart. I mean, he's well intended and he, you know, he, th it's not a bad idea. And, and like in concept, and, you know, how better to. To write about a particular event than to be there, right? And experience it for yourself. Uh, secondhand accounts are all well and good, but first person account would be, you know, would be optimal. However, war, um, especially <laughs> waging war in, uh, in the Witcher universe, it's, it's not a happy place. It's not a good place to be, and for somebody this, like, meek and small, uh, let's, let's advise him to fuck off home. Take my advice. Go back to your books while you can. War's no game. No faculty meetings to attend, no tenure to gain, end notes to compile. First soldier you see will kill you. Why would he do that? Me? A neutral civilian? A scholar? Boots. Come again? He'll kill you for your boots. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, anybody who's walked for a long time knows that uh, it gets pretty painful, uh, especially if you don't have good shoes. War reached Novigrad yet? Nope. But it's only a matter of time. Nilfgaard on one bank, Redania on the other, drooling over the city like dogs over a juicy bone. Many a ruler's choked on that bone. True. We value our liberty in Novigrad, and we know how to fight for it. Mm -hmm. The scholars especially. The sword is not the only weapon. Do not forget, architects from our academy designed the city walls. Walls no war machine has ever crumbled. That's a fair point. Information and technology is... Uh, they're powerful weapons, if used correctly. So, yeah. But, uh, considering you don't know anything about Yennefer, I guess we'll just, you know, bid you farewell and take our leave. Gotta go. So long. A moment, Witcher. You strike me as a man of the world. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite simple. Come, let's play. <laughs> he, he did it, man. He roped us in. But we are gonna play. I've actually never played this guy, so we're playing. Hmm. Why not? Splendid! Here's how it's done. Gwent t tutorial? Uh, no. I'll be the tutorial. Fuck it. <laughs> Okay, so this is Gwent. Um, ah, that's unfortunate. Oh, that sucks. You have to play as the Northern Realms. I was kind of hoping that I would um, be able to play as Nilfgaard. Um, for this uh, playthrough, I will be focusing on the on the Nilfgaardian Empire, that's pre pretty much going to be my kind of main class. Or main deck, so to speak. I'm getting rid of all the shit cards. Um, yeah, I'm getting rid of these two. And that would be... Ah, no, I can't. I have to have 22. Ah. Ooh, a catapult's fantastic. Alright, alright, things are looking looking pretty good. Alright, I'll equip them, the, and Yarp and Zygrim. Okay. <sighs> Damn it, you have to have two, 22 cards in your, de in, your, um, in your deck, yeah. But okay, so this is how this works. We're gonna be using Lord Commander of the North to be able to clear out any weather effects. Alright, so this is Gwent. This is a Dwarven game. A uh, tabletop game using cards where two armies clash on the battlefield. And you're trying to beat the opposing team. And how this basically works is that you need you you are given ten cards unless you have some kind of special ability that gives you more. And you can redraw two cards at the beginning uh, of each game, but doing so could also net you 
with worse cards than the cards you have. So you have to be kind of careful. Um, basically, the point is to beat the opponent, opposing team. You see that they have two rubies as well as we. We have two rubies as well. Those indicate our... I guess you can, could, could call it our health. So, each time we lose a ruby, we're closer to, to a loss, to losing the game. Uh, each ruby consists of one round, and it's best... Uh, it's two. It's best two out of three. Yeah, there we go. Phew. And, um... Yeah, so basically the objective is to win by high having as many points on the deck as possible. So if I put down uh, Sheila de Tanzerville, we have five points, indicated by the little where that little wreath is at. They put down a number five card as well, so now we're tied. We have uh, a couple special cards though, which we should be, which I should, I should mention them. I mean, obviously, I mean, we have the weather cards, with, which basically reduces all of the uh, unit strength in a, spe a specific bracket to one. So I have uh, biting frost. Is, uh, man, I always, always forget what they're called. This is torrential rain. Yeah, and the last one is uh, something fog. But in any case, so. The frost uh, reduces the close range bracket to one point. The fog, the middle one, the the uh, the middle range one rather, and the long range kind of catapulty uh, bracket is, is reduced by the torrential rain guard. Then we have these like were indicated by like a little circle, you know, with like two guys shaking hands. That's, that's kind of the in indicating the special ability that the card has, and that particular handshake indicates that if you have two cards by the same, um, using the same kind of, it, the same card basically, if you have two Blue Stripes Commando, if you put them together in the same bracket at the same time, they kind of get a little bonus, basically doubling their strength. Incredibly powerful ability. And we see that the Catapult card also has that ability. We have Stennis here, who's a spy. If you place him on the, on the battlefield, you get two cards. However, doing so is kind of a bit of a risk reward because each time you put down one of these spy cards, you give them to your to the opposite op opposing player. Meaning, basically, you're giving him more strength. That's not in your best interest. However, like I said, it's it's basically a um, risk reward. You get something and you lose something. However, I won't be putting down Stennis for quite a while because I don't want to risk him having a um, a unit with a special ability that can summon uh, cards from his discarded pile. That would be not so good. So there's a lot of depth and a lot of tactics involved in this game. And, um, you know, basically the point is to kind of juke out the player force him to lay down as many of his bad cards as possible. Now you see, he put down the torrential... No, no, it's not the torrential rain. Fuck, what's it called? I can go check. Impenetrable fog. He put down his impenetrable fog and now all my cards basically have one point. However, I'm gonna try to use this in my favor. I'm gonna put down another... I'm, I'm gonna show... Eh. Ah! Damn it, he fucked me! <laughs> oh, bastard, he fucked me! Okay, well, I can use the ter uh, my leader ability now to clear out any weather effects. And... Uh, mm, mm, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. It's a shame, though. I mean, ugh, damn it, he fucked me. Basically, what I was hoping uh, was gonna happen was that I was hoping that he was gonna assume that he was gonna win, so he's gonna maybe put down maybe two more cards, and he was basically just gonna pass. At which point I would remove the weather effect and then I would win. My little plan did not work. Um, you know what? I can use Dennis now without him like using decoy for, ex for example. He can, he can still summon the card back from his discard pile but here's to hoping that he doesn't have one. Uh, here we have a siege engineer or rather a Kitwini siege expert which adds one point to all the units in one bracket and in this case the siege bracket 
So we'll be making use of that ability in just a second. I just want to make sure that... Mm, fuck it, let's see if we can just force his hand a bit. Let's see what he has. Right. Mm, kind of a pathetic card. But it ain't over yet. Vanimar. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. Uh, so far he's putting all his cards in the middle bracket, the middle range bracket. Uh, you know what, from now on I'm gonna call them the combat, the archer and the siege brackets. Just to make it a bit simpler for me. Um, let's see here, I don't think he has any like high level cards like... For example... Ah, but he has that one. That's bad, that's bad. I just basically fucked myself. And I don't have any more any leader abilities anymore, so I can't. Hmm, what do we do? What do we do? I think I'm gonna force his hand. I'm thinking I'm gonna play this over to the third round. See what I can do. Okay. Okay, but he has mm, this could work. This could maybe work. I'm probably I'm not gonna lose, am I? That would be insane. Another one to the archer range. Damn it. I don't think he has. Uh, no! Oh my god! This guy! Oh! You should have. Uh, should have left those. those uh, torrential. or those weather effects on the. on the board, man. You would have won. Not that I'm complaining. And there we go, there we go, we have our first victory. Um, if he had something like the Scorch card or the um, Villain Trethemerth card, he could basically like destroy some of my cards. He didn't have any of those, but hey, I'm always trying to play it a bit cautious. This is the well, first round, so... Well, you have a knack for this game. If you ever find yourself in Oxenfurt and wish to play a true master, ask for Stepan. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. The Miraculous Guide to Gwent. Aha! This is where we... Ah! Sweet! Cool! This is where we can uh, see where all the cards are. The tome you hold in your hands, commissioned by the most gracious Duke de Berry, shall make use of magic most arcane to display which Gwent cards are currently missing from your collection. You need but open it and repeat in your mind, how about a round of Gwent, and the following shall appear. So in Velen, I guess we have 47 cards to collect. Woo! Woo! Crazy. Kaer Morin, we have one. Mm, I guess we have to beat the... Uh, who was it? Eskel, right? I think that beating him gives you one card. The Royal Palace and Vizima gives you one. Number of new cards which can be, still be won from players of no particular renown or skill. Woo! Those are a lot of cards. There are a lot of cards. Oh, gotta, gotta, gotta go. And here is Yennefer's letter. Sweet. Cool. Our first card game, our first Gwent game has been won. Woohoo! Kind of happy. Yo, Odim, sup, bro? Looking for a woman. Uh, like everyone. Not like everyone, and not just any woman. Mine smells of lilac and gooseberries. Dresses in black and white. Two schnapsies. <laughs> It'll lift your spirits. This guy comes across as kind of, uh... uh kind of moody, kind of... Uh, he, he comes across as the kind of guy that... He doesn't like it when you don't play his game by his rules. Like, you know what I mean? He seems a bit, um... A bit full of himself. So let's just, let's just, you know... Let's just roll with the, roll with the flow. Fine, I'll have a drink. Can we cut to the chase? You seen her or not? Yennefer of Venkerberg. I don't remember us mentioning her name. 
Never mentioned her name. Yet you described her perfectly. And once I hear something, I never forget. Can't help it. Let's try not to forget that. Hmm, she gives us enough Guardian Lemon. That's incredible. How do you know Yennefer? What a question. Master Dandelion's ballads, of course. The only way a humble merchant might hope to rub up against greatness. Unless, that is, he's as lucky as I am. And runs into a very patient witcher. It's a Geralt of Rivia himself. The Butcher of Blaviken. This guy is pretty knowledgeable. And for some reason I don't think it's because of Master Dandelion's uh, ballads and poems and hymns. But hey, let's assume... Let's just, let's just take his word for it and assume that it's because of those. But let's ask him... Let's prod him a bit further. How do you know who I am? Recognize me from Master Dandelion's ballads too? To your health. If that isn't a... Uh, a, <laughs> a <laughs> that's basically, basically him... Um, submitting that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know... I know a lot of stuff, but it's not because of any human uh, poet or bard. <clears throat> what do you do? Who are you? A mangy vagrant. Gone to Rodim, at your service. Vagrant? That a profession now? Uh, once a merchant of mirrors. The madding crowd dubbed me Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. You seen Yennefer? Deepest apologies, but I must ask, is this about love? Again, he seems, um, this is a guy who seems to know a lot of things, right? He seems very knowledgeable. If we just play into his little game and tell him exactly what he wants to hear and just kind of confirm the fact that, you know, yes, indeed, you do know a lot. That way we kind of will be able to just stroke his ego a bit. And maybe we can just kind of, you know, get information from him uh, through through those means. Just by kind of like satiating his little uh, narcissistic uh, desire to kind of flaunt all his knowledge. So yeah, sure. It's about love. Guessed it. It's love. I knew it at once. What do you know? Tell me. Before you appeared, it never occurred to me that might have been Yennefer. Who would have thought? Get to the point. An elf guardian scout from the local garrison saw her. Where? At their camp. She rode in there. Dark of night. Black and white. Gooseberries and... Yes, I know. Had a terse exchange with the garrison commander and raced off. Where to? I'm not omniscient. Ask at the garrison. Thanks. We men of the road must stick together. Perhaps one day I'll be in trouble and you'll be nearby to help. <laughs> uh, he said he's not omniscient, so we should go to the uh, garrison and ask. But actually, uh, uh, you know, it's funny he used that word because I suspect that he is kind of um, omniscient. I mean, if you take his initials, for example, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. It's good writing, man. It's it's really cool how they did that. I mean, yeah, just look at his um, at his initials, and maybe you you too will suspect that yeah, he, he may just be all knowing. Uh, also interesting, the first time I played the game and like he like passed me and he just disappeared, I was like, the fuck? Now it does make sense. Now I you know now it all makes sense why he would just like up and vanish. We could see these guys through the window. Done the... drinking. Mm -hmm. Then fuck off. <laughs> Don't want your kind here. <sighs> okay, so. These guys were the ones in the bar, or in the inn, who had trouble with us being there, drinking with them. And, uh, you know, we I don't want to create any more trouble. 
At the same time, I don't really take kindly to people being assholes. At all. <laughs> like, in the slightest, but, um... Huh, what do we do? What do we do? Do we placate him? Do we just, like, try to be cool about this? Wouldn't want to stay long anyway. Maybe not. And maybe you'll just stay forever. Six feet under. Ah, no. I hate, damn it. I should have uh, axied one of them. So I don't have to fight three of them. Because I, I hate, uh, I hate the, the whole melee combat bullshit that you have to do. Oh, they die. Okay, they go down pretty fast. Oh, thank God. Because in uh, in the expansion, Blood and Wine, whew, it takes them like an hour to go down. Whew, and we we gained the level too. That's insane. But that's great. That's great. I'm really happy that I didn't have to. I didn't have to like spend an hour fighting these guys. These girls are still gossiping, or rather, they're just repeating the same line over and over again. But that, you know, that's okay. Actually, shit, I, maybe I shouldn't be looting these boxes like that. Maybe I should play it a bit cool. A bit cooler. Freak. <laughs> well, over here to our left, we see this guy. Looks like he set up shop here instead. Maybe he managed to get some help from someone, or... Maybe he fixed his wagon, not sure. We meet again. Thank you for saving me. People say all kinds of things about witches, but I've always known yours to be an honorable guild. So you managed to salvage some goods? Yes, but I await the repair of my wagon. As time passes, my losses grow. Do you need something? I'll let it go half free. Hmm. I'm not gonna say no, no to that offer. Let me have a look at your stock. Guess he didn't fix his... Uh... Whoa! Holy shit. Okay, so everything is... Uh... Really is like improved. Like I mean, stats wise. I mean armor wise. I mean equipment wise. You know what I mean. Uh, speaking of which, I I'm not gonna sell the care more and stuff. I am, however, gonna sell the sword. And I do have those glasses. Ah, those fucking awesome spectacles. Those those glasses that the professor wore in The Witcher One. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. Cool little like that. That's the kind of fan service that I love. I mean, shit, man. Ah, right, 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 right. I, I, I. Okay, I remember this item now. Um, when the what was it? When the woven set came out, I think the it was a lot higher level than people could like get to reasonably at the end of the game like people who had already beaten Witcher 3 by the time the DLC came out they were like not high enough level for it so they released that Wolven Hour I think that's why I'm not sure memory could be uh, could be serving me a bit wrong there take care which reminds me I need to go in uh, inside and deposit some, some things in the stash these are Nilfgaardian soldiers. These aren't the elite ones carry, um, wearing the the golden and black armors with the with the winged helmets, but rather these are seem to be the rank and file, just the fucking the grunts, you know, that you just send into into the meat grinder. Let's deposit the. We care more and stuff, and let's be on our merry way. Woo! I see some new patrons have arrived as well. But we already know where to go. Like I said, I won't be using Roach all that much because... 
I don't know. I ju I, I've never really liked mounts in games. What can I say? Um, except in like games like I don't know World of Warcraft and maybe Metal Gear Solid Five. I know what they named you at your cutting. What kind of name is that anyway? Durvin. Nilfgaard. My gran was from Nazaire. Oh, so that's how it is. Then oh. by my leave, Master Durvin. May the gold sun oh. guide you far away from my land. So this Vandemar or Venemar? Oh shit, I forgot his name already. But this Goidemar dude seems to have uh, changed his name. In order to fit in with the new Nilfgaardian order. And his uh, neighbor is kind of angry about that. Here we have a notice requesting honeycombs by a Mrs. or Miss Tomira, the herbalist. Tomira, I will facilitate your request. Just not yet. Who told you that? Uh, Jetty. Now listen carefully. You're never to sing that rhyme again. Never. And you're not to play with Chetty no more. But Chetty's Kings my best mate. Kings do the fighting. Mate. Chetty's a little fool. Ah, get us all killed. Through the die. I see you with him again and you'll regret it. Yeah, yeah, I... Kid, I suggest you listen to your dad. Sounds like it uh, could be kind of dangerous. And by the way, that Goidemar fellow with his neighbor, we're talking about something about cutting. I don't think that's the foreskin uh, on the penis. Uh, that's more of a, like, a Middle Eastern kind of, you know, Semitic people kind of tradition. And, you know, recently in the US as well. But considering this is, like, based a lot on, like, Polish history and Polish, like, uh, culture, I think that's just, like, cutting the cutting of the hair. Not sure though. Let's check out this notice board. Looking to borrow a plow. <laughs> hey lads, there any among you can lend me a plow. Thing is, my smacked up, ag up against the stone in my field so hard it bent halfways. And may a fiend take me if I know how to fix it. Or plow my field without it. Rog it. Oops, let's use that one. Death to the invaders. Hark, fair folk of the north. If you've a yearning for freedom, if you're prepared to take up arms to defend the motherland, heed head to the woods rather. We grow stronger by the day and will soon show the Nilfgaardian vermin that the Temerian nation will not bear its yoke without a fight. If your heart bleeds blue and golden lilies, you will sooner die for your country than live as a slave to foreigners. Let us swear by our fathers who fell to the beasts of Sodom, by the souls of the dead buried at Brenna. Two arms! Yeah, here we see the kind of um, the Temerian sentiment. Uh, they're not taking taking to the occupiers all that well. Ooh, mm. I'm sorry about that. Um, which you know, understandably enough. Enough guardian lessons. Hail Karzer! Here your glory, uh, Ard Fein Esnar. Fuck. I, I tried, man. I tried. Don't understand what you just read. No wonder. It's an Guardian. And soon half the world will be speaking this mysterious tongue. So you'd best start learning it now. And yours truly can help you with that for a very modest fee. Ernest of Vicovaro. Earning the title of something... I, isn't that a knight thing? So Ernest seems to be a knight. Unless I'm mistaken. Could be. Out to relief, the Imperial Garrison hereby announces that every week the village's poor may come by to collect food rations. Rations will only be distributed to supplicants able to document proof of their poverty. Cheats will be punished like any other thieves and to the full extent of the law. Okay, so we see here that the Nilfgaardian Empire is trying to, like, you know, stretch out their hand and help as many people as possible. Uh, you know, as well as establish order and and uh, you know, trying to solidify their their control. But this is really interesting. I don't know if mm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna I, you know, I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm not gonna talk shit about the Temerians, but I don't get a. I don't think the Temerians would do something like this. 
Brother missing. Bastion, my brother, went off to fight the Black Ones. I have reason to think he stood in the great battle nearby. He is not returned to this day. Like many others, you'll say, and you'll be in the right. But if he fell, and uh, I know it's like he did, I'd give him out to the ground the least, like our fathers have done always. I'd bury him neath the barrow where our parents lie, not leave his corpse to be ate by the corpsers prowling the battlefield. He's talking about like ghouls, I guess. So I seek a man brave, able with a sword, and willing to venture out with me to find Bastion. I won't pay much, for I've not much to give, but I'm not stingy with gratitude and sure to show it a plenty. Any man willing to help, look for a raised hut along the road to Wait Orchard, just near the bridge. I've made camp there. Dune Vildenbert. I, I was thinking there for a second. Look for a raised hut along the road to Whit White Orchard, just near the bridge. And I was thinking, wait, wait, what? That though, that di direction doesn't really make sense to me. But if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about where the battle is, and that's in, in the battle is just next to where me and Vesemir was spending the night. The battle is right there. So if you're going that road towards White Orchard, so near the bridge, he should be. Mm, like there's a dilapidated not not the Wosung bridge that's not the bridge there's a dilapidated bridge over a little like mm, chasm I guess and that's the bridge he's talking about that's where he is all right did that now we know contract devil by the well Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Ah, good folk I know there's a war on and every man's got trouble enough of his own but perhaps there's one of you who could help a father in need you all surely know the well and the ruined village and the devil that guards it with jealous fury. And if you don't know, well, come ask, and I'll tell you all about it. Whoever drives that monster away from the well will get a fat purse of full of gold. Just don't tarry, for it's an urgent matter. Oodleland. All right. Now we know. We see also that we got new marker. Uh, undiscovered locations have been have been uh, put on our map, and that's basically what happens if you go to a notice board. Uh, when you go to no notice board, all of these little like question marks pop up. And that's 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 really cool, actually. I really love that. Um, so every time, it really kind of incentivizes you to, whenever you see a village, to basically just seek it out and go there and just you know talk to people and check out the notice board and it gives you a lot of information about the area and you kind of get a sense of what you know what you could be doing, where you should be going. That's just it. Day in, day out. We've gotten a couple of uh, couple of quests. But first, we see there's a very angry dwarf here, next to a burned down house or hut. Let's go and ask him. What exactly has been? Yes. Of what? Up and smoke. Yeah, I, I feel you, man. It can't be... Jesus, 50 years. <sighs> My heart goes out here. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. What happened here? Oh, got a wee bit chilly the night, so I set fire to my forge. Got it nice and roaring. Roasted some wieners. What do you think happened, dimwit? Some bugger set a light me, me workshop. I've lost everything. Everything! I'm, uh, I'm very sympathetic to his, uh, to his current predicament, so I'm not gonna be a prick. I'm gonna be empathetic and just say, hey, shit, man, I'm sorry about your situation. Sorry. Any suspects? Whole damned village. I've lived here half a century. Thought they saw me as one of their own. But everything changed when the Black Ones came. I'm the only smith around, so I got to service their garrison. Bang dents out of plate, shoe horses. That sort of thing. Nilf guardians don't pay me a bloody copper. Just give me supplies and orders. But humans can't fathom that. They think I'm getting rich off their misfortune. That I sleep on a pile of gold like a plowing dragon. They've stopped talking to me. Spit when I pass. And now this. Good luck rebuilding, Jesus. That's cold. <laughs> this guy is have clearly having. Eek. 
a really, really, really bad, just fucking weak man. So let's see if we can find find his little arsonist and just help him. I can find your arsonist, provided you're willing to pay. <sighs> I've not much left, but I'll give you all if you bring me that horse in, so that he gets what he deserves. The night of the fire, I heard movement outside my hut. Went out to see if I could find any tracks, but I found nothing. But then I haven't got cat eyes, have I? Good luck. Twisted fire starter, just like the song. Let's uh, equip some oils, by the way. I usually just put on necrophage oil and the hangman's oil. The necrophage oil helps against uh, shit. I know exactly how to do this quest, but let's pretend like I don't. Fuck. <laughs> The hangman's oil is effective against uh, against humans and non-humans, uh, which I assume means like dwarves, elves, you know, and the like. Uh, there's no uh, no place to reinforce our armor. That's okay. That's okay. And I'm using the necrophage oil, which is effective against necrophages, like for example, drowners and ghouls. Maybe I don't know how to do this quest. I assumed that going to the other side. No, we won't loot. God damn it, we won't loot. By the way, the way I'll be playing this character, right? Um, my Geralt is basically gonna be a very, very. He tries to remain his remain cool, and he tries to. He tries to be as empathetic as possible. He realizes that the world is a lot more complicated than uh, that he wishes it was, and that the the most straightforward answer, or rather the best solution to a problem, isn't the most straightforward answer. And um, basically, we may be a monster slayer, but that doesn't mean that we're just gonna kill anything that's in that monster slayer, in that monster bracket or monster category uh, indiscriminately. But rather we'll be using reason and, you know, common sense to determine who is at fault or, you know, who deserves to be quote-unquote punished. Shavings from a tinderbox. Arsonist must have lit his torch here, tossed it on the roof, then fled through the orchard. Aha! Boot prints. A man's. Large. So yeah, basically, just because somebody is a quote-unquote monster, doesn't mean that he automatically deserves to die. Rather, the way we look at it is, if you possess reason, if you are a person capable of common sense and rational thought, and you still choose, choose, by your own volition, to do evil, that's who is the quote-unquote the monster who will be going after and who we will be trying to stop. Uh, this is a very bleak world with lots of uh, kind of gray, gray choices that um, like basically no matter what you do nothing is ever going to be like a nothing you do is ever going to be like the, the best choice or the good choice but rather you're choosing one of the lesser evils and that's basically what we're going to do. That's what we're aiming for. Um, not necessarily to do good, but just not add as mu too much shit to the world. Because other people <laughs> are already doing that for us. Stinks of piss and vodka. So yeah, and then now comes the kind of philosophical angle that... Um, you know, a monster. Does, does a monster really deserve to die just because he's following his instinct? Like, if you think about it, something like a drowner or a ghoul can't really help going after people, eating the dead corpses. And usually, like, it's not a, that big a threat to, say, humans who are alive. But if you are in the vicinity, they won't, they're, you know, they're not exactly, you know, stingy. They'll eat you anyway, they don't care. 
and but does a, a ghoul or an or a drowner or a necker you know whatever deserve to die because of their nature so to say the answer is very simple um, if you are threatening humans then yes you deserve to die because at the end of the day we are professionals right and if you're endangering other people then you have to you know we're, we're gonna have to do whatever we can to stop you if not if you're just a monster and you're just like going about your business and not harming other people then you know it's all good it's all good took off his boots and went in the water probably wanted to cover his trail clever girl so yeah we're not gonna be any kind of fanatic and just like start killing anybody and everybody who's you know basically a monster just because they are a monster but rather their character is what is what's going to determine whether or not they deserve to be mm, pursued or punished or you know whatever we see that he has exited the water here something jumped out of the rushes drowners but he managed to escape are they gonna jump out now no his boots lost his boots in the rush Bleeding, but not badly. Surface wound. Usually drowners pop out of the water here. Huh. Weird. But yeah, so we're not like... We're not a crazy, crazy fucker. Tracks lead back to the village. We just like... We're not some bloodthirsty witcher, right? It was just like... In a, in a frenzy, just like seeks to kill and destroy as much as possible. We do, however, acknowledge that um, life is not as simple as we would like to be, and li that we would like it to be. So sometimes we'll have to. here, but I'll recognize him by his wounds. Indeed, um, but you know, we also acknowledge that sometimes to do good, we are gonna have to do some bad things. This is not a not a world. Marks. It's gotta be him. Yep, yeah, we found our man. We acknowledge that. Um... Oh, no, oh God, sorry. Mm. We acknowledge that the world is a shit place, and that we won't always be able to um, to be the quote unquote good guy. Sometimes we'll have to be a professional. Sometimes we're gonna have to side with the the people who are right regardless of our um, regardless of the co current social uh, situation regarding the incident in question anyways nasty uh, wound run into a drowner what the fuck do you care whoa our arsonist a charmer too come on smith wants to talk to you why not talk to a non-human sons of bitches all and dwarves are the worst Greedy little magpies do anything for gold, they will. <laughs> they forge the blades the black ones put to our throats. Am I not right? Listen, we can work this out man to man. I give you gold, you don't turn me in. My mum died a while back and I sold her tools. I've spent some, but what's left is yours. You bigoted, racist, narrow-minded prick. Not only are you an asshole, but you also tried to fucking bribe me? Oh, man. Magpies and dwarves might be greedy, but I'm not. Can't buy me. Then I'll beat your fucking mug to a pulp! <sighs> Let's play this cool. Dude, just chill and just... Come on, man. Come on, you, you, you gotta take some fucking responsibility for your actions. Calm down. Now follow me. Come on, Mr. Arsonist. Oh, speaking of which, shit, I need to check... Uh... Huh, there's no level requirement here. Oh no, oh no, no, no. 
Oh, well, that's that's weird. That's really weird. Only the the Witcher contract has that. Oh, mm. oh okay. I guess it's because uh, these other quests basically don't involve any fighting, and therefore there's no point in like giving a recommended level because. Apologize. Gotta go. Apologize. God, this dynamic weather. Oh God, this game. That like it's so atmospheric. Like I could just just be in this world for hours and just enjoy it. I know I'm a bit cuckoo, but what can I say? All right, Twisted Fire Starter, you coming? Yeah. Thankfully, we don't have to wait for him. Oh, some new notice board. Uh, some new notices on the notice board. The new order. This tr this Thursday, all peasants living nearby are invited to come listen to Peter. Sar Gwynleve, speak on the subject of laws soon to be introduced in these lands by writ of our most gracious sovereign, Emir Var Emerys. Attendance is not obligatory, but every resident of White Orchard should partake of this opportunity to learn what rights they will enjoy and duties they will have under the new order. Good folk, you no longer live in a barbarous land where every man does as he sees fit. You are now part of the great empire of Nilfgaard. Nilfgaardian law now protects you, yet it also ascribes you new obligations. Imperial forces have brought you the torch of enlighten enlightenment. Grab all of it, and your dark age shall soon give way to a bright new era. Kind of a condescending tone throughout, but hey, I, I, I'm a new Nilfgaardian sympathizer, so, you know, I approve. I, I, I've played Witcher 1, I know how people are in this world, and Witcher 2, <laughs> for that matter. Volunteers wanted. By order of Captain Peter Sarguin Leve, let it hereby be known that enlistment in the Imperial Army is now open. Recruits will be provided with room, board, and regular pay. Yet the great, greatest payment of all is, to, is the honor of serving Emir of our Emery's. Death when Adan in Kirn ap Morvud. I, uh, that, I think that means that's um, North Guardian for the white flame dancing on the groves of his foes. Once enlisted, recruits will be trained under the tutelage of the Empire's greatest strategists. Recruits' families will be assured sufficient sustenance for the entire time of their service. In the, in the case of their death on the field of glory, they will receive a lifelong pension. This is this is a pretty good way to like kind of um, instill loyalty and um, uh, build a bond between all the different peoples that are part of the Novgorodian Empire. I mean, fighting for a common cause and just like being there shoulder to shoulder and fighting with each other for the greater. Mm, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to say the greater good, but for a greater purpose, serving a purpose and uh, just contributing with your duty to something uh, much bigger than you. It's a pretty good way to kind of bind people together. We saw that in Witcher 2, with uh, all the different... Uh, I chose Jorvith's path, and I fought for Vergen and Upper Edern, so... Yeah, seeing, you know, humans, elves, and dwarves just fighting all... All of them just fighting next to uh, next to each other. Or fighting with each other. No, fighting... <laughs> alongside each other. Blah! <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna start talking less, fuck. Last night, a soldier fled from the army camp under cover of darkness. A wanted man, a recruit who recently volunteered to join his Imperial Majesty's service, goes by the name of Audrin. He claimed to be a Kedwini by birth, but said, but said King Hensel's misrule had convinced him to join the Imperial Army. He was part of said institution for a mere two days, but managed to eat and drink enough at that time for an, an entire regiment of dragoons. Anyone with information about this deserter's present location is to report to the garrison at once. Description Modest stature, wiry with thinning hair. He fled in his undergarments by squeezing through the latrine's drainage system and probably thus reeks like an old boar. Charis <laughs> Charis <laughs> Characteristic marks can be easily recognized by his voice, which has the telltale rasp of a hardened alcoholic, 
Anyone providing shelter or sustenance to this deserter will be subject to summary court martial. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, Audrin, you fuck. <laughs> Ah, oh, slimy little motherfucker. I mean, why not? If you can take advantage of someone or something, why not, I suppose. We'll be seeing mo much, much more of Andren as, as we play through the game. Imperial Edict number 1845. Let it hereby be known that by order of His Imperial Majesty's High Command, all able-bodied men of White Orchard must present themselves at the village inn, equipped with a shovel, hoe, or pickaxe of their own provision. The fields near the village are littered with corpses and given to warm spring we are currently experiencing. The High Command fears that rotting bodies might bring contagion, contagion to the village. Let this stand as proof to the residents of White Orchard that their new rules, rulers care for their safety and shall defend them not only from bandits but also from disease. By introducing measures which have long been standard in the civilized world, any man refusing to comply with this order will be flogged and put in the stocks. Signed, keep Captain Peter Sarvin Kuhnlevy. Yeah, another another indication to, that the Empire actually does care about the about the inhabitants, the citizens of of uh, Temeria. Now, you may be arguing that they only care about them because it serves the Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard's um, aim to kind of solidify their rule and make Temerians more sympathetic to them and up and at him hmm? what? what what's going on here you go one village pyromaniac in the flesh nap you I knew your mom for years charge Terneria copper this is how you repay me I've had enough Hey, soldier! A minute of your time, please. No! Willis, I beg you! I, 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 I was drunk! Didn't know what I was doing! I've told you, Master Willis. We will help you rebuild once reinforcements come. The supplies have been ordered. Not what this is about, mate. This here's the arsonist. A witcher found him. The forge was important to the garrison. Destroying it was sabotage. No trial needed here. Just a tree. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Like, I mean, I'm on, I'm completely on Willis' side here, though. I mean, what the fuck was he supposed to do? You know, you have to set a precedent that shit like this is not okay. You can't just go around torching people's home and workplace just because they're aiding the occupiers? What choice does Willis, the blacksmith, have? <sighs> Harsh as punishment goes. But deserved. You know, I hated the black ones at first like everybody else did. Now I'm thinking they might just bring order to this place. Teach these layabouts some manners. But enough about that. Your reward. And I managed to save some things from the fire. Anvil still holds, so I'm sure I can bang something out on it. You need anything, let me know. Give you a good price. Ah. <sighs> it's an unfortunate situation. I really wish that... I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have any, like... S like second doubts or I'm not gonna shed any tears for that guy he seemed to be kind of a prick but I'm just thinking about Willis I mean this is what I was talking about like that dude was a man of uh, he was a person he was an individual who could think for himself who could see himself as a rational agent over a long period of time he who and still, he chose to do something this stupid and immoral. I mean, of course, he deserves punishment, but in the greater, like, social environment, that may not have been the best thing to do. So, a return customer, welcome. 
What can I do for you this time? I mean, from Willis's perspective, right? Like, mm, I'd like you to forge something for me. No, not really. I just want you to repair something. Oh, right. Didn't exactly need much repairing there, now, did he? Did, do, do we, rather? Yeah. Oh, right. I don't have any... Uh... Right, right. All of my... Uh... All of my diagrams are gone. And formulas, too, I suppose. Alright, well, let's see if there's anything that I need. Holy shit, level 61. So everything is upgraded. Oh, this is not good, because then I have to switch from my awesome manticore armor. No, no! I guess we could just buy everything. I mean, why not, right? So long. Take care, Willis. Uh, okay, so... What do we want to do now? Lilac and gooseberries. I almost feel like we should uh, just talk to him about that. Mm, yeah, we'll do line like in gooseberries then. Let me just check. Just to see. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's go then. People are taking cover under this tree from the weather. Really fucking cool. Let's just, uh, let's just walk about for a bit. Just, just take in the atmosphere a bit, just appreciate the scenery. Hmm, the sun setting. Usually when the sun sets, I always just rest uh, throughout the night. Just so I can, you know, kind of see. And I mean, it's easier, easier to see on YouTube as well. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's basically what I'll, I'll be doing all the time. Uh, I won't be playing in the night, it's too dark and... I mean, the game, I mean, the lighting effects are just so gorgeous, so why not just appreciate it? Alright, there's that woman here by that little, like, shed. Or hut, I guess. Or a little house. I don't want to put a woman down. It's a, it's a nice little place to live, cozy. Considering we are on our way to, to the garrison, we might as well just do this. People screaming. Could be a pack of wild wolves, I guess. Yo, Gran, what's up? Lost your key, ma'am? No, not me key. Me pan. It's always <laughs> sat there empty. This hurt. That is, till the night of all the battle, a man arrived. Walk right in like for his own. Standing at the window, peering at the goings on. He must have been. Cause next I knew, there he was, coming my way. So, I grabbed me pan for protection, see? But he just asks all polite. Gran, got any birch bark by chance? Lilac berries or even a few coals? Nay, says I. And you must be right daft to pester folk at night with such foolery. This is you listening. Just staring at me pan like a magpie at a copper. <laughs> Lend it to me, Gran. I'll give it back come morn. Right baffled for what's he doing, frying in the dark. But I've got a soft heart, so I gave it to him. <laughs> Oh god, I love that. I love how it, like <laughs> she's she's telling this insanely long story. Carol's trying to listen. He starts backing off like 
fuck, this woman is crazy. But no, no, she's not letting up. Like, <laughs> she starts invading his personal space and he's just so uncomfortable about the whole thing. Uh, Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? A far dawn. Another rolled up to the hut. But come on, only the first fella left. Locked the door, hopped on his horse, and that were all I saw of him. And me pan. Twere old, black with soot, not worth much, I suppose. But I've no other. Will you help me, dearie? Bring an old widow or a pan. I could never break down that door myself. And in truth, I'm a fear to go in any road. Such a stench wafting out. Me thinks the other fellow. Well, that he's lying there. Yeah, we'll 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 help you. <laughs> even though, uh, even though you're a bit crazy, but hey, we'll help. Never taken on a pan contract. Fine, I'll go in, look around. You should wait here, just in case. Ah, the door is locked. Whatever will we do? Wait, this isn't your hut, is it? No, this is an abandoned hut. Well, good. Then I won't feel bad about destroying anything and about looting everything. <laughs> Alright, rotting flesh. We don't need that. Empty bottle. Oh, we, we could use an empty bottle. corpse explains the stench. throat. He was garroted. And some old scars. Kind of soldier might have. What's that, dearie? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> ah, the priceless frying pan. Hm, scrubbed clean. Looks like the mystery man didn't need the pan so much as the soot off it to make ink write letters. But when I gab to myself, they say I'm going barmy. <laughs> Geralt is just talking to be able to internalize his fucking thoughts. Documents. Almost entirely burnt. A few pieces still legible. Found the pan, have ye? Yes, woman. Fuck. Burnt papers from some kind of, uh, maybe some kind of spy or something? <clears throat> and when you arrange to meet, you fucking show up. I did, risking my life and the entire blasted operation, and ended up standing there with my plowing cock in my hands, waiting for nothing. <laughs> I thought the Nilfgaardian army was better organized than that, but you... Tell that blessed Lord General of yours that me and my companions don't hold grudges so we won't break off negotiations. But since our old plan's gone tits up, this time we'll choose the time and place for the next meeting. It's actually really interesting. It seems to be maybe Temerian uh, soldiers meeting up with the Nelf Guardians, maybe selling information about the... about the rebels, maybe? Cracked monocle. Interesting. Found the pan, have ye? A silver monocle, interesting. Monocles are usually worn by somebody uh, who has a bit of, bit of cash, bit of cash. So I guess, uh, hmm, I, I, I suppose some kind of fight ensued. Whoever was meeting with this, uh, I think it was this was a Temerian, basically got killed by a Nilfgaardian. It's mm, it's unclear. Here, your frying pan. Mine? But mine were black with soot. And I could see myself in this sun if I wanted. But them years are past. It was the soot the man needed. He scraped it off to make ink. Must have had an urgent letter to write. Urgently burned some other documents too. 
And... and the other fellow? Dead. Round up a few boys and bury him outside the village. Deep, so the necrophages don't dig him up. And take my advice. Don't mention this to the North Guardians. Hang about! You've earned a token of thanks. Here, sir. For the road. Have a nice day, lady. Oh man, what a character. I love it. Oh, she gave us some maked apples. Oh man, the sky. Oh, and some bread. Some consumables. That's great. And some apple juice. God damn, this woman. I love her. Oh man, the sky is just beyond beautiful. I guess this is a pretty good place to kind of call it for this episode. See you on episode 3 where we will be heading to, towards the Nilfgaardian garrison.